Hey guys, here's the Spiral Review for Spiral 25. We're going to start off with some law of sines and law of cosines. Uh, I've got a problem involving the Grand Canyon and points A, B, and C. I'm going to turn that into a triangle before I begin anything. I'll just call this A, B, and C. Um, we've got point C is 200 yards from A, so that's 200. We've got angle B is 87. Okay. We've got angle C is 67. Uh, right from the outset, uh, I know that I can figure out uh, that third angle by 180 minus 87 minus 67. And when I do that, we get 26 degrees. I don't even know if I'm going to need that, but that's a nice thing to do before solving this. Uh, so I need to know the distance between A and B. So that's up here. Um, I'm going to check to see if I want to use law of sines or law of cosines. I notice that I've got an opposite pair of information with B and side B, uh, so I'm probably going to use law of sines for this, and just to make sure, we've got enough stuff to use law of sines. Um, so let's set this up. So for my C stuff, that's going to be sine of 67 over question mark is equal to sine of 87 over 200. Uh, I kind of like flipping these things to get the variable on top. So I might write this as question mark over sine 67 is equal to 200 over sine 87. To get question mark by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by sine 67 so that the stuff on the left cancels. And on the right side, we get 200 times sine of 67 divided by sine of 87. And when I do that out, I get question mark is equal to about 208.2. Uh, uh, so 208.2 yards would be the distance between A and B. For problem three, uh, I've got Jack and Jill both starting at point A. They walk in a straight line. Uh, at an angle of 105. So they're going like this. Uh, this might be Jack. And this might be Jill. Um, and what we notice here is that uh, we kind of have a triangle when we're trying to figure out how far Jack and Jill are apart. So Jack has walked 4.5 kilometers and Jill has walked 6 kilometers. Um, I tried to do law of signs, and I've got nothing that fits for both pieces. Uh, so instead of doing law of signs, let's do law of cosines. And that's going to be based on angle A, because I'd like to figure out what side A is. So we're going to do an A squared law of cosines. So A squared is equal to 4.5 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 4.5 times 6 times cosine of 105. All the stuff on the right is just numbers, so I can quite literally type this in directly. And when I do that, I get a squared is equal to 70.22. To get a by itself, I'm going to take the square to both sides. And when I do that, we get 8.37 kilometers. I've also got to jump up to the problem up above because I realized I was doing the problem in radians instead of degrees. When you do this out, instead of 208, which is not correct, you should get a value of 184.35. Um, I should have noticed that when I tried to solve this, so 184-ish, uh, it should be less than 200 because 67 is less than 87. But I didn't bother to check my answer before moving on. Next up, we've got to graph some exponential and logarithmic functions. Uh, we're going to look at problem number five first. And dealing with an exponential function, the first thing I notice is that we've got an x in the exponent, and I've got a plus two 
at the end. That means my horizontal asymptote, because it's got uh, a y equals, is going to be at a height of 2. That's the first thing I'm going to graph. Uh, and I'm going to do that just so that I know basically kind of the bounds of this graph. Uh, in order to get some nice points for this, I'm going to try to get points with my kind of scary looking happy face there uh, to make the exponent negative 1, 0, and positive 1. I like using these points because these points uh, tell me a lot about the graph. If I plug in uh, a number to get negative 1, that would be positive 1 because 1 minus 2 is negative 1. To get 0 as the exponent, I've got to plug in 2 because 2 minus 2 is 0. And to get 1, I've got to plug in 3, because 3 minus 2 is 1. At that point, I can plug in these three points. I uh, remember that after I've got these x values, those happy numbers can be ignored for the rest of the problem. Uh, so then we've got y is equal to 5 times a half. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, plus 2. Uh, a half to the negative 1 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So that point would be at 12. Okay, let's look at 2. Um, we get 5 times a half. 2 minus 2 is 0, and then plus 2. So that's going to be 1. Uh, 5 times 1 is 1, plus 2 is 7. And then finally, for my third point, we get y equals 5 a half, uh, 3 minus 2 is 1, and then plus 2. 5 times a half is 2.5, plus 2 is going to be 4.5. That's a pretty good point, actually. So often these come out really gross. Um, okay, so we got 1, 12. We've got 2, 7. And we've got 3, 4.5. And you might see that this is a nice exponential decay function. It's going to curve downwards and look something like this. Hopefully you're a better artist than I and get a nicer looking curve. For number 7, uh, we've got a log function. And the way that we've established to do these is to convert them to exponentials first. And I've got to, before I can even start that process, get the log part by itself. So we're going to add 5 to both sides. And we get y plus 5 is equal to log base 2 of x plus 6. Let's convert. Uh, so this is my exponent, my base, and my argument or answer. So we've got 2 to the y plus 5 is equal to x plus 6. The last thing I might do is minus 6 to both sides. 2 to the y plus 5 all minus 6 is equal to x. Okay, now that we have this in exponential form, we can make a table. Um, I'm going to put my happy numbers on the left, and by left I mean right this side, because we're going to plug in for y. The other thing I'm going to do is take a look at my asymptote. In this case, it's going to be at minus 6. Because this is an x equals, this is going to be a vertical asymptote at negative 6. Okay. Um, happy numbers, we know we need negative 1, 0, and 1. And for the y values, to make that exponent negative 1, and that's going to be negative 6. Um, because negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Uh, and then we're going to do for 0, we're going to get negative 5. And then for 1, uh, we're going to get negative 4. Okay, let's scroll up a little bit so I can see. We're going to plug some numbers in and see what happens. And again, as soon as we actually figure out what y values we need, we can ignore those numbers if that's getting confusing. So, first off, we've got uh, 2 to the negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1 minus 6. 2 to the negative 1 is a half, minus 6 is negative 5.5. So negative 5.5 for x. Um, 2 to the, uh, we've got negative 5 plus 5 is 0. 
which is 1 minus 6 is negative 5. And then we've got uh, 2 to the negative 4 plus 5 is 1. 2 to the 2, uh, uh, sorry, 2 to the 1 is 2, minus 6 is negative 4. Okay, so we've got negative 5.5 comma negative 6. That's going to be like there. Uh, we've got negative 5, negative 5, which is going to be like here. We've got negative 4, negative 4, which is going to be like there. Uh, this gives us a graph that should look something like this. Next up, we've got some exponential and logarithmic equations. Uh, some of these are going to be log equations, and some are going to be equations that involve using logs. Uh, for the first one, we've got 6 to the 2n times 6 to the negative 2n is equal to 1 over 36. Uh, the first thing that I want to try to do is make this into the same base. And I might need to convert this. In fact, I do need to convert this. Uh, so that we know that 6 squared is going to be 36. 6 to the negative 2 is going to be 1 over 36. So, uh, I could rewrite this as 6 to the 2n times 6 to the negative 2n is equal to 6 to the negative 2. We've all got the same base now. Um, I know that if I'm multiplying two things that have the same base, we're adding the exponents. So when I build my equation from the exponents, I'm just going to write this as 2n plus negative 2n is equal to negative 2. I've got some like terms to combine on the left, and we've got 2 plus negative 2 is going to be 0. And on the right, we get negative 2. Uh, wait. 0 equals negative 2. Uh, all my algebra looks right. Um, what this means is that in this equation, we've got no solution. There's no number that we could plug in to possibly get uh, 1 over 36 based on the stuff on the left side. Looking at number 12, uh, we've got a log equation. So what I'm going to do is to try to get the log part by itself first. In other words, I'm going to try to get this log base 11 of n by itself. Minus 4 to both sides. We get log base 11 of n is equal to 1. And I'm going to turn this into an exponential, which means that 11 to the 1 is equal to n. Therefore, n is equal to 11. And finally, we've got some exponential models. Uh, I've got Ella depositing some money into an account. And what we're going to do is to use our exponential uh, general equation, which tells us how to work with this. Uh, in both the problems on here, we're compounding annually or at a normal rate. So really, we're just going to be looking at A is equal to... Uh, oh, I forgot the principle here. Uh, the principle times 1 plus R to the t. And in this particular equation, we've got the principal of $2,500. That's how much we start with. So it's $2,500. 1 plus and 2.5% is 0 0.025 as a decimal to the t power. Okay, uh, after five years, what we would do is say $2,500. I'm going to combine those to do 1.025. And that's to the fifth power. In doing that, we get 2828.52. Uh, the third part of this asks about 25 years, and it wants us to compare two different interest rates. So at the bank, we're getting 2.5%. That's what we just did. So 2,500 times 1 1.025 to the 25. And when I do that, 1.025 to the 25, we get $4,634.86. If I wanted to do the T note, that's the Treasury note, at 2.9%, we're looking at the same thing. 
except 2500 times 1.029, that's 2.9, instead of 2.5 to the 25. Um, and when I do that, we get 5,108 dollars and 86 cents. That's about $500 more than she would have gotten otherwise.